An American soldier is arrested in North Korea after crossing the border with the South without authorization. An agreement between the EU and Tunisia gets a cold reception in the European Parliament as MEPs grill the bloc's Home Affairs Commissioner, Ilva Johansson. Wildfires in Greece destroy forests and cause the evacuation of thousands of residents and holidaymakers. An American soldier has been arrested in North Korea after crossing the country's heavily fortified border with South Korea. The man is said to have been on a tour to the Korean border village of Panmunjom and crossed into the north without authorization. He's believed to be held in North Korean custody and the UN command is working with North Korean officials to resolve the incident. It comes amid increased tension between North Korea and the United States, who deployed a nuclear-armed submarine to South Korea on Tuesday for the first time in four decades. <laughs> Allies have warned North Korea that any use of nuclear weapons in combat would result in the end of its regime. However, periodic visits by U.S. nuclear submarines to South Korea were among several agreements reached by the two countries in April in response to North Korea's expanding nuclear threat. An agreement on managing migration recently signed between the EU and Tunisia is getting a cold reception in the European Parliament after a grilling by MEPs of the bloc's Home Affairs Commissioner Ilva Johansson on Tuesday. They're questioning a political agreement with the Tunisian government which is accused of not respecting human rights, dismantling its own democracy and attacking migrants. It's very clear that the president of Tunisia is not respecting fundamental rights um, and we don't think that the European Commission can, let's say, actually enforce that. We see the situation in Libya where actually the Libyan Coast Guard is accused of being part of a smuggling network so we are paying the smugglers um, in Libya and I think we have to learn out of these um, situations and not just do the same faults again. Many MEPs also criticize the fact that the deal was sealed by a political trio labeled Team Europe composed of European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte and Italy's Giorgia Meloni. But who are they? It's like a resigning Prime Minister, right-wing nationalist Meloni uh, uh, and, and the President herself. You know, it, that's not how we should be doing you know, these kind of important policy decisions and political decisions. Commissioner Johansson has defended the political agreement, though, arguing that cooperation with non-EU countries is crucial to migration management. I do not agree uh, with the description that Tunisia is blackmailing. I think that we have a good cooperation with Tunisia, but it's also important to strengthen this cooperation and to step up the support to Tunisia, and this is the aim of this memorandum of understanding, and especially the migration uh, part of it. Very few right-wing MEPs in the parliament showed up, and none defended the agreement during the debate. In which waters does the new British immigration law navigate, not in those of international legality? According to the United Nations, coinciding with their rival in Dorset on Tuesday of a giant boat intended to accommodate 500 asylum seekers, the UN Commissioner for Human Rights says a new law passed by MPs on Monday is contrary to the UK's obligations under international human rights and refugee law and warns that it will have profound consequences for people in need of international protection. It also includes measures to transfer irregular arrivals to what they say are safe third countries. Under the legislation, anyone reaching the country illegally by boat will be refused the right to apply for asylum in the UK. Both the boat and the bill are part of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's strategy to prevent migrants from reaching Britain in small boats across the English Channel. In 2022, more than 45,000 people made the crossing, and several lost their lives in the attempt. <laughs> Well, experience. Uh, if we work at it, you should have to be. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
China and the United States are the two most powerful economies in the world. We also happen to be the two largest emitters of greenhouse gases. And so the imperative of our two countries coming together and working and showing the rest of the world how we can cooperate and begin to address this with the urgency it requires is incredible. At that time, I would party and uh, you to have a Rescuers searching for the missing in South Korea. Over 40 people have died and about 10 others are still missing after more than a week of torrential rain caused severe flooding and landslides. At least 14 deaths were reported in this underpass in the center of the country. Some 15 vehicles, including a bus, were in the tunnel when a nearby river burst its banks. More than 10,000 soldiers have been dispatched to support rescue works. The rainfall has forced thousands of people to evacuate and left many households without power. Wildfires outside the Greek capital Athens continued to burn through forest land early on Tuesday morning. Evacuation orders have been issued for at least six seaside communities as two major fires edged closer to summer resort towns and gusts of wind hit 70 kilometers an hour. Water dumping aircraft were deployed early on Tuesday to help dozens of ground crews and mobile units battle three wildfires in the regions of Attica, Corinth and Viotia for a second day. The biggest blaze appeared to be in Devonoria, about 45 kilometers northwest of Athens, but fires in the East Attica seaside resort of Saranida and outside Lutraki in Corinth were also active despite ongoing efforts to contain them. Three volunteer firefighters in Saranida were hospitalized after sustaining eye injuries and officials say homes have been destroyed in both Saranida and Lutraki. Greater Athens and much of southern Greece were on the second highest level of alert for wildfires on Monday and Tuesday, following a four-day heat wave which had eased over the weekend. Temperatures are expected to soar again later in the week. Ukraine's armed forces say there were several overnight attacks by drones. Explosions were heard in Mykolaiv and the Black Sea port of Odessa. They said dozens of attack drones of Iranian origin were used in the raids, adding that Odessa was also targeted with caliber cruise missiles, but that all the rockets were shot down. Meanwhile, Russia said its armed forces also shot down 28 Ukrainian drones over Crimea on Monday night. Writing on Telegram, the Defense Ministry said 17 were destroyed by air defenses, while a further 11 were what it called neutralized and crashed after failing to reach their targets. Russian President Vladimir Putin, meanwhile, has promised a response to Ukraine's second attack on a key bridge in Crimea, which took place early on Monday morning. The Kremlin said traffic is now flowing again on the crossing. Putin said he expected concrete proposals to improve security on the bridge, which is important for supplying Russian troops in Ukraine. More mercenaries from Russia's Wagner military group are said to have rolled into Belarus as part of the deal that ended their mutiny. Film of some Wagner members instructing Belarusian territorial defense forces was released last week, although the video hasn't been independently verified. There are reports of over a hundred vehicles carrying Russian flags and Wagner insignia heading towards a field camp that Belarusian authorities have offered the company. President Alexander Lukashenko, who brokered a deal that ended last month's rebellion launched by Wagner chief Evgeny Prigozhin, has said that his country's military could benefit from the mercenaries' combat experience. In Russia, Wagner's main base is closing down, according to a report on a telegram channel linked to the paramilitary group. A post showed a video of flags being lowered at the base, which is located in Russia's Krasnodar region. The base in Molkino is ceasing to exist, as the message and the group is leaving for new deployment sites, it went on to say. Prigozhin ordered his mercenaries back to their camps after striking a deal to end the rebellion in exchange for an amnesty for him and his men and permission to move to Belarus. Tourism is booming in Croatia. More than 9 million people have visited the country so far this year and over 41 million overnight stays have been recorded a 12% increase compared to 2022. 
The government says this is thanks to its accession to both the Eurozone and the Schengen area on the 1st of January this year. But it may have made life a bit tougher for locals, at least initially. Uh, as part of the Eurozone, we make it easier for the tourists that are coming from the Eurozone. They don't have to look for exchange offices. They don't need to check the rates. But I think for the people who live here, it was a big change. And people are still trying to adapt also to the new prices. Many Croats are finding inflation hard to handle. It peaked at 13.5% last November, and while it has gradually been coming down, there was a spike in January when Croatia switched to the euro. But not everyone is concerned. The prices are going up uh, already for uh, several years, so this is nothing special. Inflation has now fallen to 7.5%, and some tourists are seeing the benefits. Az árak, hogy olcsóban találtunk szállást Horvátországban, mint a Balatonon. Tourism accounts for 20% of Croatia's economy, so it's vital for the country. For the moment, though, there seems to be a big difference between what the locals feel and what the figures show. Az általunk megkérdezett horvátok azt mondták, hogy az euró bevezetése óta hatalmas lett a drágulás, viszont sokkal kevesebb a turista. Ettől függetlenül az emberek optimisták, amire meg is van az okuk, hiszen az elmúlt hónapokban egyre több európai fapados légitársaság indított járatot ide az Adria déli részére. Az Euronews Siposegyi Zoltán tudósította Trogirból.